Hello, everybody. I'm Ben from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And today, we're doing a live online training class. And if you didn't attend, you're probably watching this YouTube video. So we do free online home inspection training classes. You can attend online, ask questions, bring a lot of questions. And Hello, everybody. Oh. I'm Ben. And um, if you wanted to contact me later on, um, there's my name, and there's InterNACHI's contact page. Go to nachi.org forward slash contact, and there you'll find everyone on staff. You can contact us that way. So today we're going to inspect this home. We're going to review a recent home inspection, and we're going to take a look at some inspection equipment, some tools, inspection tools that are common to do a home inspection. We're going to go over hundreds of digital pictures taken from the inspection, and we're going to look for indications of defects that we observe during the inspection, and we're going to take a look at the inspection reports and the report summary. For future online live classes, you can register by visiting this URL natchi.org forward slash webinar, natchi.org forward slash webinar. And there you'll find also past recordings of our classes. But before we start our home inspection, I want to take you to one important web page that has everything you need all in one place to be a successful home inspector. And that's natchi.org forward slash everything. So let's go there. Let's take a look. So everything you need all in one place. And there are 15 steps. It's a step-by-step -step checklist for running a successful home inspection business. The first step is to join InterNACHI. Now, why would you do that? Well, you can join InterNACHI for a monthly fee or a yearly fee. And once you join InterNACHI as a member, a whole world of opportunity opens up for you. You don't have to be a certified home inspector, just a member. And you're provided access to all of the online training courses that InterNACHI provides. All of our training is online and free to members. Now, when you're ready to become certified as a home inspector or a mold inspector or a radon inspector, we have those training and certifications program available to you at no additional cost. And they're all online and free to members. So the first step is to join InterNACHI as a member. And we have more than 30 certifications to choose from. So if you wanted to be a home energy inspector, an infrared thermographer, a chimney inspector, commercial property inspector, a garage inspector, a green building inspector. We have those certifications available and all of those training and certification programs are available online at no additional cost to members. So join InterNACHI. Step three is you work on your branding and marketing. We have a marketing department. We provide one-on-one -on -one consultation to help brand your business, which means Define who you are and why somebody should hire you and why you're different from all the rest. And then we work on branding. Oh, we, then we work on marketing after you do your branding. And InterNACHI provides free design, marketing design services. So one of the first things you do is design a business card and print it out. Well, if you are a member of InterNACHI, certified member, you can take advantage of the free marketing design services that InterNACHI provides. We'll design a business logo for you, a new one, or tweak an existing one. And then we'll put that logo on all of your marketing materials, like business cards. We'll help you design. We will design your business cards for you, your flyers, your brochures, your rack cards. All of that design work is free. All you do is place an order. We also have a home inspection business course. 
a lot of people go into the industry, home inspection industry, get trained. Technically, they're great inspectors, but they're really bad at the other things like owning and operating in a business and making it profitable. Do you know how to price your services for maximum profit? That is covered in our home inspection business course, which is free and online. Every member gets an online account. This is a portal through which you access all of the tools that you need. We help you build a home inspection website. We show you how to get online, how to get your business online. And there are free website services available. We show you how to do it. We provide you all of the webmaster tools. It's simply dragging and dropping into a website all the things that you need to have a really great, effective inspection business website. And there are many other benefits and things that are available as soon as you join InterNACHI and follow this step-by-step -step procedure. All right, let's get back to doing the home inspection. If you need inspection equipment, well, there's one place you should go. It's called inspectoroutlet.com, and there's the website address. We also have a, a URL there for an article that lists just about all the tools that you would need during a home inspection. One of the most common ones is the GFCI AFCI tester. This is a very large one that I have, and you plug it in. You can test it that way. Um, some of the other common things would be a microwave, microwave leak detector, comes with instructions. So you put this in the microwave with a cup of water and it turns red hot. Well, it glows, it doesn't get temperature hot and uh, it shows that there are microwaves hitting the sensor. Uh, you need this voltmeter to see if there's any electricity detected. There's a simple GFCI detector, a very small one. I always lose these in the crawl space. Here's a screwdriver, but you, know, you take it apart so that you can take off nuts off the front, like the jacket of the heating system. Um, moisture meter and infrared. Um, this is actually an infrared camera. It attaches on the back of my iPhone. Um, FLIR makes some infrared cameras that are this size, actually. This one attaches to an iPhone, the back of an iPhone. They have one for droids as well. And um, its companion is the moisture meter. Here's one here. But um, in Inspector Outlet sells one in a nice hard case. It's really nice because it has um, attachment to probe, but it's also non-invasive as well. And I use these meters and tools not to quantify anything. I don't measure anything. I'm a generalist. I'm not an expert. Experts measure and quantify. You don't want to do that. You want to stay within the scope of a home inspection. You never want to tell anybody that you're an expert inspector. That's a legal term that bumps you up to a bigger standard. Stay within the scope of a home inspection, a certified home inspector. Um, here's a field guide and textbooks that InterNACHI provides. We have textbooks for our courses, online courses, companion textbooks. But this field guide, you can get at inspectoroutlet.com. And um, it's a field guide. So you can see if you have a um, powder post beetle, these are the holes that you should be seeing. And that's the bug itself. There's some of the frass that comes out. So if you're with your client and you're inspecting anything that damages wood, I'm looking for mold, moisture, bugs, anything that damages wood. I'm gonna help my client understand what we're looking at. So this field guide is, is really good. And we also have a how to run a successful home inspection business. This is a print version. We also have a free online version. Um, at this time of this recording, um, if you go to natchi.org homepage, um, you can download a free copy. We also have commercial standards of practice. For those of you, I used to inspect uh, mom and pop pizza shops and dentist offices. At the end of the inspection, I give every client a home maintenance book. We have a home maintenance book, full color, inside and out. 
and it references the standards of practice and it helps limit liability and it pr provides your client um, about 20 more reasons to hire you again. Um, and it's also in Spanish. Our marketing department designs really nice brochures and flyers so you don't have to start from scratch. And um, this one is designed so that you can just put your um, business card that we designed for you on the back. But we also customize marketing flyers and business cards. Um, here's a, a magnet handle insulated and you can take off the dead front cover or other um, metallic pieces. I know in Texas you gotta measure the flow, water flow and pressure. Um, here's a really cool thing. It's new from Inspector Outlet, crawl space gloves. So if you're in the crawl space, um, they have these gloves and it's padded where you crawl all the way up to your elbow, past your elbow. It's really great, very safe and it helps protect you obviously and stay safe while you're in the crawl space. Safety is number one. And then you got your headlamp on and the fingers are really good for adjusting the headlamp and still you have dexterity there. And we also have a bunch of other tools but I'll let that go. So let's get that out of there. Um, if you want to ask questions during the class, you can. Top right corner, there's a little icon. It's like nine little squares together. You click that and you hit the QA button to ask questions. Um, a phrase that a lot of inspectors use is no visible evidence of this and you enter your defect. Well, um, you may want to reconsider using that phrase to, I did not observe any indications of, insert your defect, during my inspection. The problem is the words visible and evidence. Visible, someone may argue with you that there was a defect visible at the time of the inspection. So you don't want to convey, you don't want to get into that argument of whether or not it was visible or not. A home inspector is not required to inspect everything that's visible. You're not required to inspect and report upon everything that is visible. Evidence, the word evidence suggests that uh, a permanence. Evidence seems to be permanent, that if today there's evidence of something, then during your inspection in the past, it was there as well because it's evidence, it's permanent. So you don't want to use those two terms. They're a bit troublesome. A recommended phrase would be, I did not observe any indications of, let's say, roof leaks or moisture or mold during my inspection. It's a better phrase. If you want to learn more about that, um, it's at, we have an article, it's at natchee.org forward slash visible. There are systems and components that you're required to inspect during a certified home inspection, a general home inspection. What, do you, what are you supposed to inspect? What are you not required to inspect? All of that is written out for you in the standards of practice. And InterNACHI's is online, readily available. You should refer to it within your report and your agreement. And here's the standards of practice. So we're going to do these systems, roof, exterior, basement foundation, crawl space, structure, heating, cooling, plumbing, electrical, fireplace, attic, insulation, ventilation, doors, windows, and interiors. Let's start with roof. What am I required to inspect? The inspector shall inspect from ground level or eaves. You are not required to walk upon any roof surface. You are required to be safe, so stay safe. That's number one. If you're not trained, if you're not comfortable being on the roof or even on a ladder, um, don't go up. Stay on the ground. Um, you are required to inspect from ground level or eaves the roof covering materials, gutters, downspouts, all the things that penetrate through the roof and the general roof structure from anything accessible like doors or stairs. Describe the roof covering materials and you shall report in need of correction, observe indications of active roof leaks. So we go back. The first thing I do, well, I go up on a roof and that's part of my brand. I tell my potential clients that I'm different from all the other inspectors because I carry tall ladders 
40 foot aluminum, 28 foot fiberglass, 12 foot aluminum, step ladder, and crawl gear. Well, I go up on every roof. One of the things I do when I'm going up is I count the number of layers of roof covering materials. If there's one layer, great. If there are two, that gives me an opportunity to discover other things. Typically, two layers, well, I'm gonna have fun looking at the flashing and roof penetrations because the second layer should be flashed properly. Like the step flashing should be interwoven with the second layer, but sometimes it isn't. And the fasteners may not be going through far enough into the roof sheathing to hold down the second layer. So it's kind of fun when, I, when you get two layers of roofs. And you can easily do that by pulling up the edge of the shingle at the uh, rake board. So I'm up on the roof. One of the things I do is I take a lot of pictures. On the roof, I'll take probably 50 pictures. The exterior, another 50. Could be as, most, uh, as much as 200 pictures altogether of the roof and the exterior. But I tend to go up on the roof first for another reason. It's the most difficult thing, most dangerous. Take my time. I like to get done with that stuff first. Second thing is, as part of my brand, I like to be up on a roof, particularly when my client pulls up in the driveway with their real estate agent. I wave to them from the roof, giving them assurance that they have hired the right inspector. And then I take pictures of the roof and video of the roof, and I play the video for my clients because I don't want them up on the roof with me. And I take pictures of the ridge, left, right, front, back, all the planes, and then I focus in on the material itself, and then the installation condition. Well, that, if I'm near a chimney, that's a roof penetration. Um, but that's another system. So systems, I approach my inspections using a whole house approach. Systems are interdependent with each other. They, you affect one system, it affects all others. And while you're inspecting, you can't just inspect and focus on one system without thinking of others. So while I'm inspecting the roof, there are many other systems I'm inspecting. One of them is the chimney. Well, I see I have probably a, a flue for heating system and a flue for a solid wood fireplace. Can't get to it closely because the roof is slippery. It just rained. So I'm looking at the condition of the roof, looking for cracked or damaged shingles, blown off shingles, looking at the granular surface, anything abnormal. And there's a lot of wood rot at the cupola above the garage. And um, I'm pulling out pieces of wood, rotten wood. And the satellite dish, improperly installed, um, just screwed right into the shingles. A unsealed fastener going through the layers of shingles is a water entry point, and the flashing is heavily sealed up with some tar. Um, this is all indications of poor workmanship, and we need a professional roofer up on the roof. While I'm inspecting the roof, I'm also inspecting the exterior siding covering, covering materials, the, the siding. So I'm taking a look at that when I can. Here's the flashing counter flashing, step flashing, in between where the, the second layer intersects with the house siding materials. That's a great place to check out for roof leaks and poor installation. So this, the step flashing was not installed with the second layer of roof covering. So that's a problem. And I see, just with my nose above the ridge, above the gable uh, area, the rake board. There's a missing shingle, but I can't take a picture of it. The picture that I like. So that's about as much as I can get, but I can see that it's missing. So when I come down from the roof, I want to point to it, that that is the area of that missing shingle. I have a missing shingle at the front left corner of the upper roof plane. I don't spend a lot of time using graphics. I want to print out my report as fast as I can, so I don't do arrows or circles or text. Um, I try to limit that. 
and I just use my hand, pointing to something, using my finger. Um, and if you don't want to get up on a roof, but you wanted to inspect the roof, if you don't think you would have saw that, um, would have seen that missing shingle, you may be interested in a tool that allows you to inspect the roof from the ground. And that's the spectroscope. It's a very large, simply a large extendable pole. The wireless camera is on the end of it. It goes up 35 feet. And you have your device down here, tablet, iPad, iPhone, Droid. And you have a wireless connection in between. There's no wires at all or strings. So you can go pretty high and take a look at the roof from the ground. You can take pictures. You can zoom in and out. You can do video. And um, it's stored on your device. Excellent tool. Well, um, there are other problems with the roof. The fasteners, the staples, the heads are popping through, actually popping through the roof covering material. So this roof is old, has missing shingles, improperly installed with the flashing details. And there are um, many, many hundreds of staples popping through the roofing materials. So when I go in to the attic, I have to remember this condition. I'm going to look for roof leaks. Yeah? Downspouts. Imagine it just rained at this inspection, so water is on my mind. But on a dry day, you kind of forget. Everything looks great. But you have to imagine how water falls upon a building. It hits the top, obviously, slopes down. Even a flat roof has some slope, so it's moving. It's caught or maybe not caught by gutters. Gutters directed to the downspouts. Downspouts direct hundreds of gallons of water for a, a typical rainstorm. It's got to direct, divert that stuff, all that water, away from the foundation. And so I'm looking at the, I'm following the water flow from the roof to the gutters, downspout to the grating. I'm checking out anything that is missing, like a missing gutter strap. Downspouts that are not diverting water far enough away. Little bay windows that have their own roof problems. This one is definitely leaking. Almost every um, tab has been sealed up. Not sure what's going on here. It's probably a flashing problem. They just don't know that it is that, and so they just seal up every shingle. The ground around the house should be sloped away. Even if it's sloped away, the gardening material, the landscaping material, can absorb water and hold it there, can hold water right next to the foundation. So ideally, you have underground piping. You're not required to inspect underground piping, but that piping would take it far away from the house. Some downspout problems. So here's my report. I try to throw in a ton of pictures in my report three across, some general descriptions, and anything that's read needs to be corrected. So we have some monitoring recommended, some repairs recommended. Um, repairs can be done by a homeowner, but correction and further evaluation, that's a recommendation for a professional to come in, correct what is observed and reported, and go further, look further inspect and repair further, make further recommendations. So we have cracked shingles, we have granular, granular problems. And I put as many pictures as I can in the report for my client. So it's very easy to understand, clear to understand, easy to read. And there's the chimney as well. So right after the roof section of the report, I bring in the chimney and the fireplace. And we have cracked and loose pieces of mortar inside the fireplace at the rear wall. Second system is the exterior. Let's take a look at the standards. What are you required to inspect? Well, you can use the standards of practice. It's not just a legal document, but you can use it as a guide to help you move through a house. So the exterior tells you exactly the standards tell you exactly what you're required to inspect. And so I develop my own template in my software. I like to use mobile devices and write the report as I inspect. 
and I use the standards of practice as a guide. I make sure that everything that I'm required to inspect is in my software, and I can't move on to the next section unless I have checked or um, noted that component within the system. So within the exterior system, you have to inspect the exterior wall coverings, uh, materials, the flashing, the trim, all exterior doors, adjacent walkways and driveways, stairs, stoops, steps, stairways, ramps, porches, patios, decks, balconies, carports, railings, guards, handrails, on and on. All of these, there's a lot on the exterior. You shall describe any exterior wall covering materials and report as in need of correction any improper spacing between intermediate baluster spindles and rails. And also tells you what you're not required to inspect. So let's go back. The exterior. The exterior wall covering materials. Siding materials. There's the walkways. There's the driveway. There's my money shot. Take a picture of your inspection vehicle all the time. Put it in your report. Um, I can't, you're not required to inspect the second floor um, windows. You can't reach them from the ground. But you can use your zoom and your camera to take pictures. I take pictures of everything. Everything that I can possibly take a picture of. I take hundreds of pictures. And digital images are free. So take a lot of pictures, take a lot of video. I share them with my client on a USB. Found a couple holes. The intersection between the masonry chimney and the house siding materials, that's always a great place to look for um, water entry problems. So we have some cracking and some separation. Sometimes the, the footing and foundation of the heavy masonry chimney moves in different ways than the rest of the house, right? So you take a look at the, the way that they are connected to each other. Uh, Mark says, Mark asks a question, asks a question, what reporting software do you use? Sorry if you already said it, no problem. Um, there are many to choose from. Um, they're out there. What the software that I like is anything that provides me the ability to um, go mobile and write while I inspect. So I like handheld devices. So there's Home Gauge. You can take a look at homegauge.com. Um, there's Home Inspection um, Pro. Um, and there's 3D. There's a lot of them out there. I used to in use um, InspectView. Hardly anybody um, says that. So, But that's, that was a great software um, and allowed me to write on the fly. But that's the one, the one thing that's available on just about all of the software companies websites is a sample report. So take a look at the sample report that's generated by the software. And then there's typically a free trial that you could use to take a look yourself and play around with it. Um, but if you go to inspectoroutlet.com, inspectoroutlet.com, um, there are exclusive discounts, exclusive to InterNACHI members through inspectoroutlet.com for all of those softwares. So go to inspectoroutlet.com click the software tab on the left, and you'll find all of the discounts for those software um, companies um, for exclusive discounts for InterNACHI members. Thanks, Mark, for the question. All right, um, back to the exterior. So we have a pipe coming out of the foundation wall. Um, probably just below the band rim joist. It's a sump pump discharge pipe. Um, and sump pumps are used for basements, typically, or crawl spaces. Um, this is a northern, uh, northeastern climate. So we have a sump pump in a foundation. Um, this is Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. So that pipe is typically a, a discharge for a sump pump. And the rear deck porch um, wooden structure is poorly um, installed. Um, the, the footings, the foundations, are simply blocks laid on their side, and they built it on top of that. Um, the floor joists are about 20 feet long, 
um, two by tens, two by eights. So they're, they, the deck actually bounces. Um, there's a lot of wood rot structural problems. The floorboards on the ends are um, rotten. Um, so I'm taking a look. This is a great shot. Um, this is me sticking my finger in a rotten piece of wood. Um, this entire deck, just before I got there, was painted. So painted, newly painted things. Home inspectors love that stuff. It could be a fresh paint. That's great. But it tends to cover up rotten wood. So um, take a look at anything that's freshly painted. And take a look at the ends. The end grains is where the absorption is. Ten wood tends to absorb lengthwise from the grain in, from the cut end in. So take a look at that. And then the structural problems of the, the rear deck. Um, this, this post is um, falling over. Um, it's rotten. It's leaning over. So um, this deck has a lot of problems, as you can see. If you want to really get good at inspecting decks, we have an online video course on how to inspect decks to a standard. And that's the nachi.org deck inspection so that URL you don't have to write these URLs down you can take a look at the video write them down that way or you can email me I'm on the contact page and I can send you back a link um, so the railings are in poor shape the steps are in poor shape that's my screwdriver I went over all these tools here but that's my screwdriver going through um, when, I, when my screwdriver goes through I don't try to hide it I take a picture of it and I put it in the report so anything that I damage like that um, that's a good thing because I found it for my client. So when my screwdriver goes through something, I'm taking a picture just like that. Um, so I'm tapping, I'm probing, going through things. Um, there's actually frass, ant parts, galleries, holes, exit holes um, coming out. So we have a carpenter ant infestation as well. And carpet ants love that rotten wood, that wood that gets a little wet every once in a while. Um, it's a really good source for them. And the step is in poor, terrible condition, and it's been eaten up. So whenever you see a carpet ant around inside the house um, or outside, um, it's a good indication of maybe some moisture intrusion or wood rot. I get kind of excited when I see those bugs. Um, I personally stay within the scope of a home inspection. I don't identify the bug specifically, but um, uh, I tell my client um, everything that I can that is damaging the wood structural components of the home. I feel that's my responsibility. If something's damaging the wood structure, um, I'm going to get it and I'm going to report it. So there's a high step. Again, I don't use... Um, lines or circles it just it's, it's too difficult it's time-consuming to do that so just use your hands and fingers to make things clear my hand is in the picture a lot to show scale if you remove my hand from this picture you have no idea how big this piece of rotten wood is um, the garage door trim boards I'm always on any door or window I tend to do top left top right bottom left bottom right and then the seal or the tread that's my pattern when you do a thousand inspections you get into a pattern for every window every door you look the 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 and you're looking for wood rot and you're tapping like crazy ding 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 tap 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 and sometimes you probe probe you get a little point going uh, dryer exhaust Keep that in mind. Is it a bathroom or ex dryer exhaust? Every mechanical exhaust should be going outside. Uh, window sills, trim boards, water faucets. This is a cold climate, so every spigot on the outside should be a frost-free hose bib spigot. Every receptacle on the outside should be GFCI protected. And we have, we went over in the beginning of the course on how to test those, or the tools that help you test them. Very easy to do. Um, somebody parged, coated the, the front porch there. Well, that's breaking up. They wanted to make it look nice, but it's about an eighth of an, eighth of an inch thick. That's not going to work. Settlement and some opening. So water is going to move right into there, and I know there's a band rim joist somewhere in there. 
and there's uh, spigots again. This is all the exterior, and there's a the missing piece on the front light and um, some cracking, glazing, putty, window putty, um, and a potential, depending on the age of the home, for um, some lead content in the paint and the materials there. So my report is pretty simple. Lots of pictures. Anything red means it, got, it has to be monitored, repaired, or corrected by a professional. And just go through the exterior components, like the exterior and then the components, the driveway, the parking, patio porch, the deck, the steps, the handrails, exterior water faucets, receptacles, there's problems there. And then the public gas meter, that public gas meter is on the exterior in this slide show, um, it's later on. Oh, and the gas meter actually was turned off at the house. They did not put the utilities on prior to the home, for the home inspection. So I want to make sure that my client understands that. Take a picture of the valve in the off position and uh, explain my inspection restrictions. HVAC, the cooling is on the outside. So there's the compressor unit, condenser unit, has a compressor inside, compresses the refrigerant gas. There's the lines, the suction lines and refrigerant lines, not well insulated. The dryer looks a little rusty and old. There's no major damage. The shut off switch, disconnect within sight of the unit. The plumbing is also on the outside of the house. Um, we have natural gas, public gas supplied to the home. Um, the line up from the ground, from the street, is on the left through the shutoff valve, which is in the off position, pressure regulator comes down. I'm not worried about the surface rust, really. Gas meter, and then the line goes back into the home. I want to follow that line. Anything that penetrates the exterior wall coverings is a pathway, potential pathway for water, moisture intrusion, and vermin. Um, so I want to take a picture of that inspection restriction. And there's the line going in. It's not sealed. The electrical is on the outside of the house as well. So you have to think about how do you inspect and how do you put it in the report. For me, I inspect everything almost all at once. I go by systems, really. Start with the roof system. But I'm paying attention to other systems that are interdependent with the roof system, like anything that penetrates the roof, chimney system, the plumbing system, right? And then there's windows, skylights. That could be part of it. And the gutters and downspouts are integrated. So a lot of things to put together. But if you do it system by system, roof system, exterior system, and then when you're doing the exteriors, you get parts, components of other systems, like the plumbing system. We just saw that gas meter. And the electrical system, here's the electrical meter box. But in the report, I try to group them all together under systems. And then when I'm inside, sometimes I'll put basement together or kitchen together or the, the um, bedrooms or bathrooms I'll put under one heading. There's uh, an open gap. The underground line has pulled down, the conduit has pulled down, pulled the meter a little bit away from the house. There's a gap, potential for water penetration. Sometimes when you grab that meter box, you can actually rip it off the house. It's so bad. Not that bad on this house, but it needs to be sealed up. And the water line, the electric line, sorry, service line going into the um, basement down there, um, that is a pathway for water penetration, grounding. Now the garage, I put the garage under a, in the report as a, a separate system. And I want to take a look at the inspection restrictions. The house is relatively vacant. Um, there's some things that are in my way, but I'm going to report any observations or indications of defects. And I'm tapping with my screwdriver structural components. So on the outside, remember we have water problems with the deck, structural problems, and also infestation. Well, I see frass or something going on, like sawdust, piles of sawdust with insect parts at this one area. And for sure, there it is. So I broke open through the, the wall there where the wall and the top plate of the foundation of the garage meet and um, there's infestation there and wood damage to structural components. There's the old, old, old garage door opener. Um, 
30 years old maybe, um, it's improperly wired. That line going up on the right, the brown one, is hardwired into the light fixture. So that's improperly wired. And there are no safety features. Um, the automatic reverse didn't work. There's no laser eyes, beams across the doorway. Missing steps. Um, anything, for me, I exceed the standards of practice and I call out anything with more than two, step, two steps or more without a handrail. Um, I just think of um, a child with some challenges, physical challenges, or um, an elderly person. Um, two steps is a big issue for some folks, and I am going to um, side with my client. And I don't know who's going to come into the home. Could be um, grandma coming in, and um, I don't want anybody taking a, a wrong turn coming out of the house door into the garage and making a turn right off that. That's, that's 20 inches. That's what, well, if 14 inches. If it's a seven by 11, it's at least 14 inches. You could break an ankle 14 inches, drop 14 inches on your ankle, especially an older person or a child. Yep, so I'm gonna call out missing handrail. They don't have to install it. This was how the house was built back then. It's, it was built to code. But home inspectors are in a great position. We inspect homes that were built to code but are not safe or have huge problems. Just because a house was built to code 30 years ago doesn't mean it's safe now. So I exceed the standards of practice in recommending a handrail in this situation. I'm gonna side on the safety of my client. Uh, the wooden door is not a fire rated door. The garage receptacles are not, not GFCI protected. And there's um, my report for the garage. A couple pages, a couple problems. HVAC. There's a thermostat. It's not programmable. So it's inefficient. It's a manual standard thermostat. It's losing. It's not efficient. So it's, um, you can save money, a lot of money, the homeowner can save a lot of money, by replacing this manual thermostat with a, a programmable one. The cost is high in the beginning, but the, but the investment is returned. You get a return on your investment by the money that is saved. The energy that is saved with a programmable thermostat, thermostat basically pays for itself. Um, so from 10 feet away, you should be able to, to identify the efficiency of the HVAC system. If you can't, InterNACHI has a lot of online training free to members on how to inspect HVAC systems, all the systems, different types of systems, efficiencies, and components. So from 10 feet away, hmm, I'm thinking low efficiency. There's the shutoff coming in, drip leg, gas line going out, going into the system, um, shutoff switch, service switch, and there's the burners, pilot light, I try to take a picture of uh, what I can see um, in relation to the heat exchanger. We have an inspection restriction. If you remember, the gas is shut off. I cannot turn on this, the unit, but it's in really poor shape. A lot of rust and corrosion going on. This is the natural draft vent area, the hood, and um, there's the, the connection, the pipe connection for the fluid exhaust going into the masonry chimney. And there's a lot of rust and soot deposits that are falling back. So something's going on. There's a lot of rust and corrosion going through the heat exchanger and dropping out onto the bottom of the hood, the natural draft hood, before it goes up into the pipe connection into the chimney stack, right? So that's an indication to me that something is going on that's not normal. It's abnormal, anomaly, and it needs to be corrected and inspected further by HVAC professional. There's the flue pipe connection to the masonry chimney. No clean out. Take a picture of the, the heating system. You get a lot of information there, model number, serial number, and year. 1986 was this unit. And um, it's a low efficiency heating system. So it's 65%. It's basically wasting a lot. One third of the energy is wasted up the chimney stack. Uh, the um, disposable air filter is being sucked into the blower fan. It hasn't been serviced or cleaned. Take a picture of the service tag. I like to tell my client 
who was there last and what did they do? And if it hasn't been within the mo uh, most recent year, uh, um, I will recommend that it be cleaned and serviced by a professional. There's the evaporator coil, very old unit, looking for condensate problems, newer condensate pump. That's good, it's plugged in, and it's discharging outside, far away. And that's the bottom of the fireplace, the underside, the underside belly of the fireplace. The wood underneath the masonry fireplace should be removed. Um, and there's my report. So the heating system is there. We've got problems, inspection restrictions, but we've got components. Here's some information about the heating system. There's the thermostat part, electrical shutoff switch, gas shutoff valve, the burners, there's a problem. The air filter, there's a problem. There's no service, and um, it, it, it's very old. So we have significant issues here. And then the cooling system is just as bad. It's very old. Um, the exterior condition is poor at the end of its service life expectancy. And correction and further evaluation is recommended in the comment about its inefficiency. The plumbing system, well, the hot water tank is there. What do you see on top of the hot water tank that may be uh, of concern? Well, there's a, a flame igniter. Someone's, or match, it could be matches too. So someone's been there recently trying to light the pilot light of the hot water tank. Why? I don't know. Did it blow out? Backdraft? Is it an old heating system? Well, I don't know because the gas to the house has been shut off. The utilities are off. So there's no hot water. There's gas shutoff valve, water shutoff valve. There's the temperature control, TPR valve extended to the floor. It's 40 gallon gas. It was installed back then. There's the flue pipe, and I'm gonna comment upon that. And there's the plumbing. So I inspect water going out, water coming in, hot water source, and uh, let's go to the electrical. Electrical system. Well, the electrical system, the standards of practice are very clear. Some inspectors say that they don't know exactly what to inspect when it comes to the electrical. Well, you go here to the standards of practice, you click the electrical link, and it says, the inspector shall inspect, and if you look at the, the things that you're required to inspect, it kind of follows the electric line coming into the home, the service coming in. So the service drop, the overhead service conductors, and the attachment point, the service head, the gooseneck drip loops, the service mast, service conduit and raceway, electrical meter and base, service entrance conductors, the main service disconnect, the panel boards or overcurrent protection devices like circuit breakers and fuses, service grounding and bonding, representative number of switches, fixtures, receptacles, including AFCI, and then GFCI, and smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. You shall describe the main service disconnects amperage Rating, if labeled, don't have to guess, and the type of wiring observed, and shall report in need of correction these deficiencies. Okay, so back to the inspection. You do not have to remove the dead front cover of any panel board. Um, you could use one of these. There's a magnet handle. It's insulated. Um, stick it on the panel board and pull it off if you wanted to, um, but you're not required to at all. Um, you should test it at least to make sure there's no voltage coming through and uh, use the back of your hand, uh, but you're not required to open up anything. I recommend taking a look at the identification of each breaker. Each breaker, each circuit should be uniquely identified. If it's not, that's a great way to recommend a licensed electrician to come to the property, inspect that um, defect, and look further prior to closing. Um, you can get the rating there. It's a 150 amp panel, older panel. And I take a look at all the things that I can see, looking for really aluminum branch wiring, circuit wiring. Um, there's a wire crossing the main lug nuts right there. I don't want that. So nothing really going on. Remember the electrical meter box on the outside? Well, that has a problem, right? It needs to be sealed, separating from the house. The breakers are not labeled. 
and the dead front cover was removed prior to the inspection in this inspection it was just open so the electrical panel was actually open and live and a huge hazard to everyone so i really wanted to keep everybody away from that but um i uh i wanted to make sure that the homeowner knew that as well that there's an electrical hazard um, issue at the panel a live exposed electrical components at the panel because somebody removed the dead front and left it on the ground another thing that i do is take a picture of prior conditions like the panel cover being on the floor but also take a picture of every breaker make sure that i know that the breakers were on or if there's any that have tripped off i want to take a picture of it and identify it where it is or turned off manually i want to make sure that has been um, a picture is in the report about that and i want to note if it was tripped off there's a problem i'm not going to reset it an electrician needs to and if it's been turned off i'm certainly not going to turn it back on so we never turn breakers off and on if there's a test button for an afc or, or gfci you can test it and reset it basement foundation structure crawl space so there's the basement a finished basement there's no egress for this i need an emergency egress for this this room here is essentially a bedroom a living space and i'm looking at anything that um where walls intersect floor and where walls intersect ceiling i want to look for indications of um uh, water penetration, right? You want to look for water marks. And this floor actually had a bubble in the middle. The floor was had paneling, flooring down, and um, there's a large bubble in the middle. Stepping on it, felt solid. I don't know why there was a big bubble. Something going on there, potentially. Not installed properly. Or it was swelled. We may have water coming in. And we actually do. So that's me probing... Um, I don't have it here. It's an extendable moisture probe. Um, not quantifiable, but quali qualitative, not quantitative. It just tells me an anomaly. It feels, it senses that there's moisture between the two probes. It sends a signal, audible signal, and a red light. And we have mold there as well. And we have the homeowner with the humidifier in the basement. Dehumidifier, sorry. Dehumidifier running in the basement. And we have a couple sump pumps, one next to the electrical panel. It's dry, but it's very old, and it won't turn on. I lifted the float manually, and it didn't turn on, and there's no check valve. There's another sump pump that was installed. A lot of water in it, but it didn't work either. So it's not discharging. So we got some water problems. Remember all the water problems on the outside? And um, there's water intrusion, moisture intrusion on the inside now. And there's mold, indications of mold. Um, the house was treated for termites in the past. Those are the drill holes. So they drill holes through every cell of the foundation, if it's a concrete block wall, and then they fill it up with their treatment chemicals. So signs of prior treatment, but we have active treatment as well. Active infestation, damaging wood, a member out on the outside. I go in the crawl space, and here's some crawl space gloves. You may want to... Get these and get them at Inspector Outlet. These are really nice. They protect your arms where you crawl. You can use crawl gear, wheels for your legs and just move through the crawl space. And um, I like to get in there. I have a crawl space suit. Um, I don't do the Tyvek stuff. Looks like um, you know some kind of nuclear laboratory. So I use a canvas, gray canvas, neutral gray canvas with zippers. And um, actually, I take a look at the, how the, the sill plate is fastened to the um, foundation, and there's a missing washer and nut at the lag bolt there. And there's, um, so I went to the deck where the deck was, where that water penetration and infestation, signs of infestation. And sure enough, there's big piles of sawdust, signs of uh, carbonary ant infestation. And if you don't know a lot about WDO inspections or doing looking out for anything that damages wood within the scope of a home inspection, um, you can take a look at this field guide that we have available, and we have a, um, a Wood Destroying Organism online course. It's free for members of InterNACHI. Now also take a look at anything in the basement that is structural, 
and I take pictures, lots of pictures. Stick my hand above things to take pictures of, and I tend to find stuff. So I can't see that with my head, can't get that, but I stuck my camera up there, and there's major wood damage up there, and that is um, underneath that deck area. Missing handrails at the basement stairs, and then the report itself, and I stick to all the good stuff in there. Um, a couple pictures that kind of describe what I saw down in the basement, some big, large, wide-angle shots, and then some close-up shots, especially of the wood damage, the structural damage, the infestation, and the mold and moisture intrusion, problems with the sump pump, and then we have a, a missing nut and washer on the seal plate bolt. So the plumbing, you want to think of water again, water going out, the sewer line, drain waste vent, and the water supply coming in. So in this house, um, northeast, uh, they use a lot of cast iron. I'm looking for cracks down the line of the cast iron. Everything looks pretty good. Some pump discharge, dryer vent exhaust, water coming in, shutoff valve, pressure regulator, water meter, water shutoff valve, missing jumper cable, jumper line, um, pressure regulator, um, a, a drive-by water meter sensor. Next system is the attic insulation and ventilation. Fairly open and easy to walk, although you're not required to walk in. Um, it's, you don't want to fall through the ceiling. You want to be safe. But um, I took a picture of the structure. I'm concerned about roof leaks. We had all those roof problems on the outside, and now I re you have to remember that. As you come in to the other system, you want to take a general, you want to take a look at the general structure of the roof and the roof structure and look for water damage, water intrusion, signs of water marks. And there are. There are signs of water. Um, I don't care if it's dry or wet. I'm going to call that out. I want to make sure my client knows that there has something, there's been something going on in the past that allowed water to intrude in the past. And I recommend the seller to comment upon this as well. Um, the attic access, you can see, is basically a big hole um, allowing conditioned air to escape into the attic out of the house. It's like 100 feet, 100 cubic feet per minute. It's not sealed. It's not insulated. It's a huge energy loss. The heating and cooling system is already inefficient, 65% efficiency, and now you've got a big hole. So you spend, waste a lot of energy conditioning the home, and now a lot of that conditioned air is escaping outside, essentially, through an open window. About three inches of um, insulation, insulation wool, some people refer to it, old fiberglass insulation. Um, they hand threw it in. So we need some air sealing, it would be great on this old home, and some additional insulation. And there's the attic part of my inspection report. A lot of pictures of the roof and the structure. Um, and then the house had roof leaks in the past indicated by the watermarks on the roof decking. And so that needs to be attended to. Bathrooms I put under a section all by itself. And we've got problems in the bath. Um, loose tiles, open grout lines, poor sealant. I like to pull on the soap dish and the handle. Um, there's water going through that fixture right there. Um, the, the edges of the um, wallpaper in the shower are lifting up. I like to get detailed, flush every toilet, run every sink, looking for leaks. GFCI receptacle is improperly wired. The windows and doors open up. We've got moisture condensation probably because um, the relative humidity is probably over 70% in the bathroom. We have a cold surface. If it's like 40 or 50 degrees because of poor insulation, well, that's a great, uh, that's a condition conducive to um, mold growth. So that's a little bit of mold there that can be wiped up. Water leak coming through the fixture, the handle fixture of the, um, of the tub and shower, and it's dripping on the ceiling below. So when I get down to the first floor, I want to look up below the bathroom. And take a look at that problem and um, a missing door hanger on the door 
Um, flush the, this is the second floor um, hallway bath. Again, that sink there is in poor shape. It's going to leak, and it is leaking. I crushed it with my hand. Uh, GFCI missing. The, the, um, this is the master shower. So the master shower, I fill up with water, and it was, um, it was not draining. It was actually very slow drain. It was filling up with water. You're not required to test any pans, shower pans, but I run a lot of water at all the fixtures, hot and cold. And it was actually, um, the shower was leaking into the master um, bedroom closet area. And there's below that bathroom area is the kitchen. So I want to take a look at the ceiling and take a picture of that in every room. And there's a first floor half bath. There's no receptacle in this room. And the report itself, anything that's red needs to be corrected by a professional. No GFCI protection in the bathrooms. Um, there's a link, uh, a, a leaking sink, a sink that's leaking. The drain in the master shower is in poor shape. It's not draining. Um, and then the interior, it's basically, I'm on, I'm, I see the finish line at the home inspection now. I'm moving my way through the interior, doing um, receptacles, representative receptacles and windows and surfaces, and I see a fireplace coming up in a kitchen, and that's where I'm going to end. So I'm looking at some smoke detectors, some railings, some fixtures, wall receptacles, the doors, the surfaces, the floor surfaces, the walls, the ceilings, looking at handles that don't work, had a couple problems, did the laundry, um, that's leaking, the dryer vent should be cleaned up. It's exhausting outside, that's good. But the uh, rubber hoses should be replaced by something pressure tested, and there's no GFCI receptacle and no water leak catch pan. In the fireplace, we have some problems with the fireplace. I open and close the damper door by hand, but I take a look at the rear wall, has cracks in the mortar joints, the left wall, the right wall, the, the bottom of the fireplace and on the inside, and then the hearth. And I do that on every fireplace inspection. And then the kitchen. Garbage disposal didn't work. There's a leak. Um, no GFCIs. Um, this stove hood exhausts inside. It should exhaust out. Um, there's improper wiring of the stove top, the electric stove top. The oven turned on. That's nice. The dishwasher turned on. And uh, that's about it for the inspection. There are a couple other report uh, pages in the report, and I add infestation, signs of infestation, observed indications of uh, infestation by insects causing structural damage, and a good indication of moisture intrusion, significant moisture intrusion coming into the basement. We have some meters going off, and we've got some indications of mold growth. And my client was not with me at the inspection, so I tell my client that I prefer to have my clients with me. They can, if they were with me, they could ask all the questions that they should ask, and um, we could see things um, that they wanted to see, and they could bring up their concerns, and I could address them. Without my client being there, it's really limited. My inspection is limited. But I recommend being hired again prior to closing, maybe through the walkthrough so that you can be there with me. There's a wood-destroying organism report. There's a summary. Um, in Pennsylvania, you were allowed to um, do a summary page with cost estimates, as long as you reported the source of the cost estimate, and there was a range. And in this house, uh, it looks like I had six pages for the summary. Uh, report software uh, with exclusive discounts for InterNACHI members can be found at inspectoroutlet.com, and we also have a defect recognition and report writing course. It's online and free to members, and uh, you could write that URL down or email me. I'm on the contact page, and I can reply back with a direct link to the course. And for the next course, go to this URL, natcha.org forward slash webinar. We have free online live classes that you can attend and ask questions, and um, there's also the recordings of all the past live classes that we've had at natcha.org forward slash webinar. My name is Ben. I am from InterNACHI. That's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. I'll see you on the next live class. See ya.